Um, is that an indication, is that last story an indication of the kind of president you would like to be? I would like to be able to indicate by using that margin of appreciation and without damaging the dignity of the president uh, of the office that to the Irish people, human rights are of central importance. And I think they are. And I think that's why it would be good to have somebody who is non-party there because you're not controlled and you can. Now, I wouldn't use bad language. I'd have to refrain from that, be a little bit less explicit, but I think I could make it fairly clear. I mean, I did it in Iran as well with uh, Rafsanjani and uh, Veliati. Uh, and I raised the question of the treatment of Jewish people because they'd arrested part of a small Jewish community. Uh, the attacks on um, the Baha'is and also on, on gay people. And of course, when I came to mention gay people, the eyes went up like that. And they said, oh, it's because it's an Islamic uh, country. And, all. and I was asking about the court procedures because they had just hatcheted to death uh, two women in a provincial university on allegations of being lesbian. And some of you may remember the, the awful photographs about two years ago of these two beautiful young men who were hanged from the back of a lorry because they'd engaged in an intimate relationship and the religious police found out and they were beaten to a pulp and then hanged. And the awful thing is those poor young men would not have had any sense that they were martyrs. And you know, uh, in some sections of the Islamic world, you can face death with equanimity if you're a martyr. But they had been so humiliated in front of their own community that they felt they, that they were the dregs of society. Uh, so I took up these issues with, with Viliat and Raftanzan, and subsequently, in the light of that tragic case, with the Iranian ambassador. And I forced an apology out of them. Unfortunately, it was a private meeting, so it wasn't on the record. Uh, but uh, I speed read. And instead of the Bible, I'd had the Quran beside my bed, so I read through it in about three quarters of an hour. And I was able to locate all the sections that dealt uh, with this aspect. And I said to uh, Mr. Rafsanjani, uh, I said, I have read the Holy Quran, in which the Holy Prophet Muhammad, blessed be his name, because you have to be respectful, mm. um, refers to the subject of homosexuality, but he only refers to the sins of the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah, and says, this is very peculiar, never heard anything like that in my life. Men going off with other men and dumping their wives, and that's about it. He doesn't appoint a particular specific thing, and it's in Shura's 25 and 26 or something. And then I had my clincher. I said, do you, in your arrogance, presume to be a greater moral authority than the holy prophet Muhammad himself? And he was nicely caught. What could he say? He could hardly say, well, yes, I'm much more significant than Mohammed, because then he'd have been guilty of blasphemy. So I kind of snookered him. And you see, that's the kind of thing you can do by being polite and respectful. You can still find them out in all the contradictions. Now, I'd much prefer to spit fury and blasphemy at them uh, and give vent to my feelings, but sometimes you have to go the roundabout way and it can be more effective. You've mentioned human rights um, quite a few times yes. since we started speaking this afternoon. Um, I'm, I'm struck by the fact that I know you're engaged in, 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 in struggles for human rights all over the world, but there are also quite a number of human rights issues going on, you know, right on our very doorstep Absolutely. at home. I mean, what would be, do you think, or what are the most important or the most awful um, oppressions that are going on here in Ireland at the minute? Well, I think the worst is the oppression of poverty. Uh, and I see that um, all over the place coming back now. The Celtic tiger wasn't used. And one of the things that um, concerns me is that I spotted now nearly two years ago uh, when there were, the, there were the first indicators that we were going to really hit a snag in the economy that the government was acting not to address the financial situation, but instead to attack and undermine and neutralize all those agencies that spoke out and there were a voice for the vulnerable. 
I mean, it's astonishing when you think about it. We were going to a real economic blizzard, and the first thing they do is they abolish combat poverty. Then they go after the Equality Authority, the Human Rights Commission, all the budgets, hatches it, hatches it, hatches it. And the Equality Authority, for example, had its budget reduced by 43%. That's astonishing. So I, I did a huge thing about that and issued stuff to all the newspapers. I might as well have not bothered because other colleagues were getting headlines all over the place calling for... Uh, the impeachment of the directors of the bank or something like that, you know, sensational stories. But that was the meat of it. And that, I think, is uh, where I think in these issues of poverty, deprivation, health... I mean, I know Mary Harney since she was a student in Trinity. I like and respect her. And I think she is motivated by a certain ideological position. But I don't agree with it, because it seems to me that we're having a two-tier health service. And there's that woman, Susie uh, Long, down in Kilkenny, uh, who had cancer. And she used the national health. Now, if she'd gone private, she'd have been diagnosed and probably cured. And as I said at that stage, and I believe it with every fiber of my being, that woman, an Irish citizen, was sentenced to death for the crime of being poor. That's not acceptable in my book. It's absolutely not acceptable. So that's a human right. But I'd say this as well. I like the generosity of the Irish people. And there's a small group who are always whinging and saying, if you do anything in Africa, if you do anything in Asia, if you do anything for anybody else on the planet, ah, what about our own charity begins at home, all this stuff. I think that's disgusting. Yes, of course we look after our own people, but have, have we any idea even in the present wretched state of our relative wealth compared to these people. I mean, I've been in Nigeria, for example, in Kenya, and these sort of, at, at um, interparliamentary union meetings. Appalling. Appalling. Kenya is a country I, ne I never want to go to Nairobi again. It was the, even the, the first class hotel was dirty and awful. The conditions in the city were... Oh, Disgusting. And yet when I went into those slums, into little tin shacks with sewerage going through them, I developed such a respect for those people because they would turn their children out in little uniforms, model children, and the way they, would, they, the way they were sent out by their parents. And very often to Irish nuns. Or priests, you know, I mean, they've got a good bashing here and they deserve a fair amount of it. But we should also remember that there are people who have sacrificed themselves over there. That was the first thing I want to say. 